But we must start straight away by looking at a, a great occasion for, for the club and particularly for Manchester City women yesterday because a crowd of 31,312 were at the Etihad Stadium. I was there watching City women play United. It was the Women's Super League derby, the first one, and the first time the, the women, the ladies as they used to be called, had played at the Etihad and what a magnificent occasion it was. Lovely day for it. The, the, I thought the club did it, the whole thing magnificently well. And with me today are two of the regulars on the podcast, Adam and Paul. But we've also got Gail Redston, who is one of the original City ladies um, here with us today. So I've got to start really by asking you, Gail, about that occasion and what it meant to you. Because I can't, I can't begin to imagine how significant that was to you yesterday. Oh, it's a very, very special occasion yesterday. I mean, being a City fan alone, but actually being an ex-player, you know, to see how far the game's come, you know, from when we first started off, you know, scrounging kits and doing what we had to do, where what the girls have got now is just unbelievable. And it was a fabulous occasion. And to get three points as well. Absolutely. And to see so many people there. I mean, it was. I, I was wandering around, uh, obviously I do the vlog and I film people, the, the smiles on people's faces, and this might be something that's lost slightly in the fact that this was the, the, this this significant first women's game, but it was City and United fans mixing together. You know, there was no animosity, there was no threat. Oh yes, there was an a, an away end, so that so the section where the away fans normally are was populated by United fans, but throughout the rest of the stadium, mainly City fans, but United fans were spread anywhere, and there was never even as, as far as I could see, a raised voice. So that's significant as well, isn't it? It's, it's, it's massively significant because um, I, I was like looking through social media this morning and um, somebody had put on that there was two young girls sat in front of this person and I'd say they think they were, she said they were about eight or ten. And one turned to the other and said, so which team are you supporting? And she went, I don't really know because they're both Manchester. I mean, <laughs> to me, that, that, that's just unbelievable. It's brilliant. You know, if, if the world was like that, it'd be a better place. Well, I was speaking to one of the, the pioneers of your, your team um, who was on my vlog and I got to admit her name's gone out of my mind, who admitted that she was a big United fan, but yet played for City Ladies back in your day. So I suppose that, that to, to actually be quite outwardly saying that is would be considered to be very brave by the men, but it, it didn't seem like a brave thing to, to, the, to the women. No, it wasn't. Not at all. We must have had about four or five United fans. I mean, Bev Harrop, Rita Howard. It was Rita. That was it Re yeah, Rita Howard? Yeah, yeah. well, you know, massive United fan. But once we had this nucleus of players, um, we had this bond, no matter whether you were a Liverpool fan, United fan, it didn't matter. It, what meant to us was we were, we were there as a unit playing a, a game of football that we wanted to play. Tell us what it was like right at the very beginning, you know, I and mean, how did you ever get involved in it? Well, it was what, apparently, um, it started off from football in the community, and a guy that worked for them, Neil Mather, he, it was his brainstorm, really. He decided to sort out a women's game and have trials and see what, how far it would go. And apparently Neil was reckoning maybe about 20 girls had turn up, and apparently there's about 75 turned up at Platt Lane for trials. And it was... One of my brothers has just said to me, he saw it in the evening news and said, oh, they're doing trials, why don't you go down? I mean, I hadn't played for many years and I went down, I thought, let's see what the competition's like, I wonder if I'll get in, because I was one of the oldest. I started playing for City at 30 and um, went down, thought, yeah, I like this, got asked to come back and the rest was history. But it was just, it was just fantastic, you know, that the girls that all wanted to just play football. Was it all smooth running? Because I was at Gary James' book launch and obviously Gary's brought out this book called City Women, An Oral History. Yeah. Um, and Gary is very, very passionate about any type of history to do with, with the city in particular, but Manchester football. And because, I say because, maybe it's not because, but his good lady Heidi was in your original team. So obviously that means he has a, even more of an interest, I suppose, in City Women. And at that launch, you were there and, and plenty of other former players were there. And we saw video too of some of the games. And one of the early games that we saw footage of was a game at Turf Moor. And we all thought, oh, this is going to be a game at Turf Moor. But it was actually 
I guess, on that field next to it, or some, certainly somewhere nearby, it wasn't actually at Turf Moor. So when I say, was it all smooth sailing? I know it wasn't. It wasn't smooth sailing at the beginning, was it? No, not at all. I mean, it was, it was hard work, you know, try, even trying to get kit. You know, it was, yeah, 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 you'll, they'll give us a kit, and then they didn't give us a kit. They loaned us a kit. And then, you know, constantly saying, is there any chance we can borrow a minibus? And, you know... Most of the times we had to go in cars. You know, if we were playing away, them days we didn't have sat nav or telephones or anything. So Neil would get an email of somebody or a fax <laughs> and then print them all off for everybody. Like There's about four cars going down to, say, Preston or wherever it would be. And, and you could guarantee somebody would get lost and they'd just turn up just in time for kickoff. So you were already in your kits, presumably, before no. you even said... No, no. Was Kit- there a dressing room when you got there? S- sometimes, not all <laughs> the time. Sometimes we've actually had to get dress changed in the in the cars. I mean, there was one situation, we went to um, a game in Liverpool, and we're looking and we, think, we couldn't find this pitch, but we're all saying, well, it's a park. and there's, So they're all saying, it can't be there because there's no goalposts. So we're all sat there thinking, next thing, that there's a pub next to the this park and this girl comes out and she said are you lot Man City and we all went yeah are we in the right place they said yeah one minute next thing they come out of the pub with the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like what, what's going on said oh we can't leave them out somebody will nick them yeah. <laughs> it is Liverpool yeah, it's Liverpool <laughs> fire you know so, so and we'd gone down in the mini in the minibus and we're, Neil was frightened to death in case we'd come back to the minibus and there was no, nothing of it you know so, <laughs> there's quite a few situations it's like the same that. now <laughs> <laughs> yeah and from that I, I know that one of the low points um, that that Gary explained in in the talk that he gave uh, was the fact that uh, you know there was occasions when you didn't even have a full eleven, and I think there was a, a moment where you had a team meeting, wasn't there? Where shall we carry on or shall we just not bother anymore? So from that seventy five that turned up at the first trial, there was a crisis moment, wasn't there? A high crisis moment. Yeah, there, there was. Like you say, there were, we turned up for training, and there was literally seven of us there. And there was a couple saying, should we merge, let's go to Stockport? You know, because they had a quite an established team at the time. And we were saying, no, we, we, you know, we're Man City. We're not going anywhere. We'll get players in. We will, we'll get players in. And fortunately for us, uh, there was a couple of teams that had folded, you know, in the next couple of weeks. And girls did, you know, start windling back in. But we, we actually played games where there's only seven of us, eight of us turned up. I mean, there was a young girl called Lou Wakefield, and she used to play for United. She wasn't getting a game. She came to us, um, and she was like fourteen. And she, she was, said at first, she said, I, was, "I was like wondering what, what have I come to because there's no manager on the sideline. There's no this. There's no that." She said, "But all of a sudden, within like a month, it just grew massively, and we just got an influx of players and got a manager in, and it just sort of worked." Well, we're, here we are in 2019 and Manchester City's owners have decided that City women should be very promoted. For, should um, I mean, the, the, the Academy Stadium is often quoted as being the, the women's stadium almost more than it's talked about as the EDS or the under-18s. You know, that is the home. And I presume after this high-profile game against United, the games will go back in, most of them anyway, unless there's a huge demand, into the CFA again, which has about a 9,000-seat stadium. So that's a big statement. They've got a fully professional squad, um, and they're taking it very seriously. And, and uh, I mean, I know there are other clubs out there, and I know that Doncaster Bells have been going a long time and have been one of the trailblazers. Bristol have been a very well-known club, uh, and obviously Arsenal mm-hmm. and Chelsea. But City, I would still claim, uh, obviously I'm biased because I'm a blue, are somewhat trailblazers in all this, aren't they? Definitely. I mean, if you think, yeah, like you say, Arsenal. I mean, we went, we were invited down to a tournament at Arsenal many moons ago, and the the things that you say they had, they had, they all had the kits, they all had the tracksuits, they all had the same bags, and as a, as a female footballer looking at that, you're thinking, wow, you know, I wish we had that. You know, why why can't we get that? But don't forget the times that we were there at City, they were struggling. You know, they, they were playing in the second division and we were winning trophies and we was being asked then to go and show the trophies. Give It's a bit of morale. 
you know, for the guys that, you know, <laughs> look what we've won. We've won some yeah. silverware. So maybe it's a little bit of, you know, payback for the, the, the club saying, well, thanks for the ladies doing this. And, it, and we've, it's continued on. Mm. I mean, now, like you said, we're, we're way up there now, aren't we? Absolutely. What what do you see now as the future? I mean, do you see, um, you know, I don't know whether it's going to be, uh, again, famously in Gary's videos, he showed Alex Williams, who obviously was one of the pioneers of City in the Community, which started all this, uh, saying that, and this was like <laughs> 30 years ago, or in, in two or three two years or three from years, now, yeah. it'll be fully professional. It's been a bit slower than we yeah. thought. It, it didn't get that predicament right, did it? <laughs> no. Well, it was a predicament rather than a well, prediction, well, yeah. A prediction, <laughs> sorry, yeah. It was, he didn't get that right. But, but d- I mean, now we're, now we're where we are now. You know, you can do a prediction, Gail. Five, ten, twenty years where, where there's a 30, 40, 50,000 crowd in the Etihad and they're paying the same as they pay... Now for the men, could that could that happen? The world's I, changing, isn't it? I, I think it could possibly happen because I think the World Cup did the women's game. This an absolute world beaters, weren't they? This that yeah, the, some of the play was fantastic, and most of the men that I speak to in the pubs, they've all said, "Oh, you know, they all know I play football." Oh, girl, what watched the game the other night? Blah, blah, what a great game of football that was, and you can hear them also saying, "Do you know what I liked about the game? The women got on with it. You know, mm. the referees and everything. They weren't rolling about." <clears throat> You know, trying to con the referee or anything like that. They there just wasn't got on a with... booking in that game. I noticed that yesterday. No bookings. No, but and this is it. The way, I think the women just get on with it. And I think if people now are looking at what there is now and like it, I think it will definitely get bigger. <laughs> 